It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman here with Andrew Serrani, and today we are talking about a homily that Father Royce Gregerson, one of our diocesan priests, recently preached and he posted online and has gotten a lot of traffic, a lot of shares Mm -hmm. on Facebook at least, Yeah, and uh, thought it was good to address, particularly addressing the recent scandals that have been Mm -hmm. uh, announced and, and information that's been coming out, and I think a lot of our question is like, okay, what do we do? Yeah, you know, exactly. And I think there's a lot of people that are outraged, and rightfully so. There's a lot of people that are complaining. But my, I always think like, okay, if I post something about it, what good is it going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, if I complain about something, if I compliment somebody who said something, what productive is happening? And mm-hmm. so I think Father Royce has some some ideas on on how we can do something yeah and exactly I think everybody and, wants to do something and yeah and i think that that is, is something that people are sort of itching for at this point too is that you know we all feel this really heavy burden of honestly like even just identifying as catholic can feel like a burden in some ways when news like this comes out because you know how much confusion there's going to be i mean first of all very first thing is you just feel so sad that Mm -hmm. and and angry and uh, sort of afraid and all of those emotions that you feel about the fact that it even happened that there could be this horrible evil that has been happening and that none of us knew about or didn't know the extent of or whatever you know you feel the weight of that sadness but then you also feel that the weight of the confusion and the people you know making it into whatever anti-Catholic thing that they can, you know, just using it as an excuse to, to hate us, you know, because we're Catholic and those kinds of things. And so I think the news last week first is shocking. And and then you sort of feel that weight and that sadness. And then the news just keeps being bad. And then you just want to feel like you can do something. And for me, at least when I read Father Royce's homily on Sunday, that's something that I really took away from it. It's a really good and thorough homily describing the pain that we would all feel and why it's so evil and why it's so serious. But then also giving us an action step, something that we can take ownership of for ourselves. And while we, you know, while we keep pushing and and making our voices heard so that we can make sure we see the changes that we want to see, this is also, as I mentioned in the news, if you were listening, Pope Francis talks about this prayer and fasting that all of us can do that really can make a difference. And we can start doing it today. Like right. while we wait for all of this to resolve, while we keep doing what we can to make a difference for the sake of victims, for the sake of justice, for the sake of change going forward, we can be fasting and praying literally right now today Mm -hmm. and sort of perpetually. So that was something that I really took away from Father Royce's homily. But the first thing that really struck me from Father Royce's homily was the way that he categorized the evil, the way that he described it. He said, how did this happen? Surely this is the question for many of us, how and why? How could these men who were consecrated to Christ, whose hands were anointed for handling the body and blood of Christ, inflict so much pain? How could they have ascended day after day to the sacred altars of the church to commit sacrilege after sacrilege, mocking Christ's holy sacrifice by their conduct? How could they continue to open the gates of paradise to repentant sinners while sealing their own doom? At the root of everything is that they forgot who they are and they forgot whom Christ had called them to be. Yeah. And that really struck me because I, you know, I don't, I don't think that the evil of ab- abuse, especially with all of the details that have come out in the last few weeks, I don't think that the evil of that is lost on us exactly. But I do think that we can get, we can get a little bit numb to it almost and a little bit forget why this example is so serious. I, I hear people say, well, it's not just the church who has people who, commit the evil of abuse. Sure. They'll say, well, married people also commit abuse and school teachers and Boy Scout leaders and whatever else. Right. You know, they say statistics show. But I think what Father Royce is pointing out here is that it doesn't matter what the statistics show mm-hmm. because school teachers and scout leaders and dads, you know, whoever else, they're not anointed with holy orders and they're not given this sacramental identity as being Christ to us. Mm -hmm. And whether we like it or not, that really does change the perspective. Like that really does make this 
much more serious than than we really can even fathom. Yeah. And that's not to like sort of depress us further, but just to sort of like awaken us, I think, to the gravity of it and so that we can take it seriously. And, and as Father Royce is going to point out, so that we can commit ourselves in a real way to, like I keep saying, to pushing for the justice that is needed for the um, relief and healing of victims and also for taking seriously the part that we can play in prayer and fasting Mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So then Father Royce later in his homily, his homily is really good and you should definitely read the whole thing at father, Greg, father spelled out gregerson.com. But he later gets to talking about this call to reparation and he explains reparation really well. He talks about, he said, we can take offensive by committing ourselves to doing reparation for the sins of these priests and bishops. He said, what do I mean by reparation? Reparation is when one person voluntarily takes upon himself the punishment due to another. When one tries to restore the balance of goodness in the world for so much evil that has been done. It is what Christ did when he took upon himself the punishment due for our sins of which he was completely innocent. Most of us will never have the chance to meet these victims of abuse, but we can still offer our prayer and sacrifices for them. We will probably not get the chance to meet the priests who committed these atrocities, many of whom have passed on from this world, but we can still pray for their conversion. Um, I, I think that is the key there is explaining because I don't reparation yeah. isn't something yeah. that we normally talk about. And then you can talk about you know, we need to be praying for mm-hmm. either the acts themselves or the predators or those that have yeah, been hurt. The healing. Yeah. Uh, but this idea of reparation, I think, is is interesting that that voluntarily taking on the, mm-hmm. the sacrifice for another person. Yeah. And Father Royce even went on to explain that this is not about us making up for something we ourselves did wrong. He said, of course, you don't have to do this. This scandal was not your fault, but that's entirely the point of reparation. Jesus did not deserve to die for our sins, but he did so willingly and lovingly. Satan has desired to enter the hearts of Christ's priests. As we have all seen too clearly in recent weeks, he has corrupted many of them and used them to attack Christ's faithful, especially these little ones so precious to the Lord. We must fight back. We must not allow Satan to win the day. Yes, these days in which we live are evil, but Christ will ultimately have the victory. So what Father Royce is explaining is that this isn't, we lay people are not committing ourselves to prayer and fasting in acts of reparation because we did something wrong necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not because the victims were doing anything wrong or anything like that. It's very specifically because of the sins of these priests and bishops that we've been talking about. But that's the power of prayer and sacrifice. It's what Jesus showed us on the cross. Like if we really believe in the power of what Jesus did on the cross, then we already know what can happen when you voluntarily through no fault of your, not to make up for something you did yourself, say, I'm going to make this sacrifice to make up for something that someone else did. Think about how powerful that is because Jesus showed it to us. He showed us what that love and that prayer can do. So it's not just, you know, a lot of times, and this is a little bit of a soapbox that I get on occasionally, you'll hear people say, oh, prayers aren't enough. Well, no, of course, prayers aren't enough. Mm -hmm. But we actually believe in the power of prayer. And the reason that we believe that is because Jesus showed it to us. And that sacrifice is the other part of that. Right. Not just prayer, but also making sacrifice to do some kind of fasting. Yeah. So that's kind of a very condensed sort of summary of what, what Father Royce was talking about in his homily. And then sort of picking up on Catholic social media in the last couple of days is this hashtag sackcloth and ashes campaign where they're talking about just exactly what Pope Francis is saying and what Father Royce is saying about these acts of reparation, these ways that we can make sacrifices and commit ourselves to these prayers as a way of giving ourselves into this this desire for justice mm-hmm. and making up for in even w- in little ways for the sins and the evil that's been committed. I'm not going to read the whole statement from them uh, since we're getting close to the end of our segment here, but they just talked about how horrible this whole situation is. It says, we are one body in Christ. As such, we invite you to join us in observing a 40-day period of prayer and fasting as an act of reparation to God for these sins. From the Feast of the Queenship of Mary on August 22nd, that's tomorrow through the month of September we will join our sorrow with our lady of sorrows and make daily sacrifices appropriate to our own circumstances for this intention so and then they explain exactly like father Royce did what reparation is this is not about making up for yourself Mm -hmm. um 
although we do do that for our own sins, our own right. personal sins. But not in, taking blame. Yeah, we're not taking blame. In this case, this is about recognizing the evil that others have done and mm-hmm. voluntarily taking on responsibility for it as a sacrifice. So some of their ideas for ways of making these acts of reparation, this prayer and fasting, especially I, I wish I could send people a copy of it. I, I have a like little photo of it, <laughs> but Father Royce encouraged his own parishioners up uh, in Goshen to pray St. John the Evangelist in Goshen. They're going to pray this chaplet of reparation from this book in Sunu Yezu, which you can buy if you would like. But he is praying it with his parishioners specifically on Thursdays, which is the day that we often associate with the priesthood because of the institution of the Eucharist on Holy Thursday. Sure. So we think about that as being closely associated with priests. So Father Royce is going to pray the chaplet of reparation with his parishioners and I'm going to do that along with them on Thursdays from here in Fort Wayne. Um, there's another version of a chaplet of reparation, which was were prayers given to the children at Fatima from the angel of peace. You can find that one pretty easily online if you just search for it and maybe we'll be able to post a link to it. Some other ideas, just praying the morning offering every day, offering all of your sacrifices of the day for this intention, mm-hmm. praying the divine mercy chaplet, which you can pray along with Redeemer Radio at 5 a.m. and at 3 p.m., by the way, if you would like to. Otherwise, um, you can pray any time during the day. You can pray the rosary specifically for this intention. Maybe you want to go to Mass an extra day each week or even every day if that's possible for you. Commit yourself to a holy hour or even a holy half hour or whatever extra prayers you know you can make part of your life. And then fasting. Same kind of thing that we do during Lent, but you're going to be doing it for an extra 40 days this year if if you want to commit to that. Some ideas, Fridays and Wednesdays are traditional days of fasting, the day Jesus died and the day he was betrayed. Mm-hmm. Um, you could skip a meal a day or like every day of the week, you could maybe not eat breakfast one day a week or every day. You could just fast until lunchtime or whatever. Don't eat desserts. Give up adding salt or condiments to your food. Don't drink soda, don't drink alcohol, no snacking, no drinks besides water, you know, whatever um, kind of little sacrifice that you... Any single one or any combination of... Exactly. Sure. Um, Some other things you can fast from besides food, uh, this is a huge one these days, is things media related. Yeah. Um, And this can be, this can be so specific to your circumstance. Think about what is going to be a real sacrifice for Mm -hmm. you. So like... For example, you could give up social media entirely if that if, <laughs> if that's going to work for you. Some people, like uh, we use social media for our work, so it would be hard for us to do that. Maybe you could give up just your favorite app, like maybe just don't do Facebook. Right. Um, or maybe only use social media on the weekends or only use it for a certain time during the day or give it up for a certain time. Like I won't go on Facebook after dinner or I won't go on Facebook before breakfast. Right. If you don't do social media, I guarantee you still use media and electronics. Don't watch TV or only watch it at specific times or don't listen to music. Listen to Redeemer Radio instead. You know, all of these things, all of these little sacrifices, we believe truly add up and make a difference because Christ gave us that example. Yeah. And check out fathergregerson.com. We've got more here on the Kyle Hammond Show on Redeemer Radio.